Hi guys, it's Kath. Today, I'm going to show you how to create miniature high heel shoes and this gorgeous shoe closet to display them. We'll be using very simple 3D modeling techniques to design the shoes and old school woodworking techniques to build a showing unit. I'll even show you how I added lighting inside this closet to make it really stand out. This is such a fun build and it looks amazing in the big dollhouse. Let's jump right into it. To build the closet, I'll be using these wood slats as the main structure. They're 7 inches high by 3 inches wide and a quarter inch thick. For the side panels, I'm using 3 quarter inch wide craft sticks. Combine two of them for thickness. You can use wood glue or Eileen's tacky glue for a strong bond. I'll add one to each side of the slat. But first, I need to trim off the rounded ends. The easiest way I found to get a crisp edge is to cut on both sides and then snap the wood. Because I want this closet to span an entire wall, I'll be adding a slat to the sides to make it wider. Add craft sticks to the outer edges. Then cut a few shorter lengths to close up the top and bottoms. I also made another section of closet that used one slat instead of three. We'll attach the two together at the end. Now it's time for some paint. I'll be using white because the walls of my dollhouse are white and it'll give it that built-in look. This is just a base layer of paint so it doesn't need to be perfect. This closet will have clear shelves that will sit on little brackets. To make those, I first make marks one inch apart which translates to about a foot in real life. Then, I trim some small segments from a coffee stirrer and place them on those marks. These will be the brackets that our shelves will sit on. Add on another layer of paint. If you're wondering why I'm not painting the back of this closet, it's because I'll be covering them with mirrored stickers. This will give the closet so much more dimension and make the room that it sits in look much bigger. Just cut a piece to size. Peel off the sticker backing and then press it into place. This blue protective film peels right off to reveal the gorgeous mirror. Before we keep going, I'd like to take a minute to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. They recently sent me their Delta 2 portable power station to try and it has been so helpful for my projects. It has 6 outlets, USB ports, USB-C ports, and even a car charging port. I'm not always near an outlet and there are so many times I need to use a tool outside because of sawdust and fumes. This power station allows me to take my tools outside and work for hours on end without worrying about how far I am from a wall outlet. Most of the time, I keep this power station in my studio to charge my computer and my phone while I'm working on a project. It sits on the table right next to me, so I have a steady power source for all my electronics and my tools. Because you can directly use various types of plugs, you don't need to mess around with these adapters that we all have too many of and often lose.
The LCD display on the unit is super helpful as it tells you how many hours of power you have remaining, the percentage, how much power you're pulling in and out. It updates as you plug more items in and use additional power. I tested several of my high usage power tools on this power station and it worked beautifully. I didn't experience any overloading or heating up of the unit. It also connects to my phone so I can tell how much power is being used and how much is left. Funny enough, one of the things I use this machine for is to power up other batteries. Mostly camera batteries because I run out of juice so fast while I'm filming. But I also use it to charge small power banks that I always keep on me and use when I leave the house. When I'm stepping out, I always take a small power bank and keep it in my purse. However, if you go on a road trip or a camping trip, you can take this entire power station with you. I even use this for housework like cutting down weeds because it's just so convenient and I don't need to worry about overloading the system. I've included the link in the description box for the model that I'm using here. This is not just a battery, it's a powerful tool that's now an essential when I'm cutting wood or using my laser outside. I'll show you the different ways I incorporate this power station into my work throughout the rest of this video. Now let's get back to finishing the closet. For the actual shoe shelves, I'm using these clear acrylic sheets. I first cut the sheet to the width I need. The easiest way to cut acrylic is the same as wood. I just score the plastic on both sides and snap it right off. Then score and snap the panels into 1 inch segments. We'll need 5 shelves for each of the 4 sections. Let's move on to lighting. The first thing I do is drill holes into the top of the closet where I want the lights to be. Then widen that hole to a quarter inch. Grab one quarter inch wide eyelets and push them into the hole from the inside. This will give the lighting a really clean look. I have one light above each section, but you can add more if you like. I glue the smaller closet at a 90 degree angle to the big one. Before we install the lights, I added some trim to the front and the top of the closet. This will give the closet an overall cleaner look. The top trim is also where we will be hiding all the wires for the lights. For the lighting itself, I'm using the same fairy string lights that I used in my big dollhouse video. They're dummy proof and the easiest way to add several lights to your dollhouse at once. In order to easily access the on off switch but still hide the battery pack, I'll be gluing the pack here. Cut two holes, one for the switch and one for the wire. This will allow you to turn the lights on and off without taking out the whole contraption. The power cord on my hot glue gun is pretty short, so this is where my power station comes in handy. For the actual fairy lights, I'll be doubling them up for extra brightness. Just take two from the end and twist them together. Then glue or tape them above the hole that you drilled. I'm using hot glue here for a quick and strong hold. It may look messy here, but don't worry, this will all be covered up. Let's slide this beauty into the dollhouse room to complete the structure. I add craft sticks painted white to the exterior sides and to the bottom to close off the gap. I 
I also use this super long craft stick to add an L shade to the top of the closet. I cut more lengths from that stick to place above the wires. These pieces just sit in place without being glued in because we'll need to remove it to access the on off switch. However, I did glue the segments together and add a reinforcement. Paint the remaining areas white. It's always so incredible to me how paint can tie a miniature piece together. While the closet is in the dollhouse, let's complete the trim. Putting it inside the dollhouse to do this ensures that everything lines up perfectly with no gaps at all. Look at that perfect fit. It's so satisfying. To turn the lights on, I simply lift the removable panel, switch it on, and push it back into place. Then you can organize and store all of your miniature bags and shoes. Speaking of shoes, let's design the heels that we talked about. The first step is to find a side view picture of the shoes that you want to design. This is so helpful because it gives you a base structure to work with. I found this simple silhouette of a heel and saved the image. In Tinkercad, which is a free site for 3D modeling, I import that image as an SVG file. It basically turns that picture into a 3D model. I turn the model right side up and duplicate it so I have three of these shoe shapes. The center one is my guy, and the side ones are actually the sides of the shoe. I add this rounded cone to the front of the toe area and cut away the red sides. Then I add a ball shape to the back heel and remove the extra material. I'm basically just adding shapes to match the base structure that we imported. If it feels like I'm speeding through this part, it's because I am. So much of this process is just playing around with shapes to see what fits best and then smoothing out the shoe as much as possible. I will admit that there is other software that makes these steps simpler, but Tinkercad is by far the most beginner friendly and intuitive. So be patient and you'll get there. Once your design is complete, you can print it. I'll be using my resin printer today because it does amazing with tiny details. Plug her in and power her up. Resin can be really messy and the fumes might bother those who are sensitive to smells, so it's worth doing this outside if you can. Pour some resin into the basin and start the print. In just a matter of minutes, I have more than a dozen shoes. I wash all the excess resin off with 90% isopropyl alcohol and then cure it in my light machine. This wash and cure machine is honestly a lifesaver because resin printing can be so messy and time consuming.
When it comes to 3D prints, the majority of the manual work is in the finishing process. So that means cutting off all the support, sanding out any rough edges, and then painting it. I like setting aside a few hours just to do all the prep work while watching a good true crime show. Once the pieces are sanded, it's time for paint. For the inside soles, I'll be using my airbrush. It's the easiest way to get a flawless paint job. I use this beige color that I mixed up and pour it inside my airbrush. Airbrushing is easy, but it's not as fun as hand painting the outside of the shoes. This is where you can get really creative with paint color, texture, graphics, and even the finish. For a super shiny finish, I use a clear gel nail polish. You can also use glitter polish or decals. There is really no limit but your imagination. If you're curious about the Doc Martens in this closet, I made them using the same method as the high heels by combining a bunch of different basic shapes together. Again, it's a time-consuming process, but you only need to design it once, and then you can print thousands of copies. I think both pair of shoes took me about a week to complete, so really be patient. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned something new. I had so much fun working on this project and cannot wait to design a closet for clothing. I'll see you next time, bye!